Christ the Good Shepherd, Mark 6, 34-44. Uh, we don't live in an agricultural society. You know what that means, right? How many of you are farmers? I didn't think so. <laughs> How many of you are shepherds? <laughs> no. So it doesn't really uh, touch our hearts when the Bible says, especially in Psalms 23:1, "The Lord is my shepherd." Doesn't really uh, touch our hearts, but it, it touches me, and I think that when I'm all alone, right? I'm home alone, uh, my parents are away, I'm by myself, especially in the fall or winter, right? I feel lonely, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, He's still with me, He's going to guide me. There were uh, times when I lived by myself in the past, my, brother's, my brother was married, uh, he has his own life. My parents were in another country. I'm by myself. I know. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. The Lord is my shepherd. He's still with me, and He will guide me. Uh, some of you may not like your parents that much. Uh, I used. To <laughs> I was there <laughs> before. <laughs> Right, but what about your friends? Uh, they're very nice, aren't they? But they're not gonna be with you all the time, right? They're not gonna be with you forever. So everybody needs a good shepherd. There's only one good shepherd in this world, in the whole universe, and that's Jesus Christ. Christ had compassion on a large crowd because they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were hungry and they were thirsty. Literally and figuratively, right? They were literally hungry at the same time. They were spiritually hungry. They were spiritually thirsty. But they did, they did not know where to go. They did not know what to do. But Jesus Christ, He's uh, his performing miracles and healings all the time. So they just all followed Him. There were thousands there. Thousands. So Jesus saw them and He had compassion on them. He has compassion on us. When we are lonely, sometimes that lonely loneliness just kills you. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I just thought about Britney Spears. Uh, <laughs> Hit me, baby, one more time, <laughs> and she sings. You know, this loneliness is killing me. <laughs> so, sorry, you got a great pastor, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that loneliness just kills us, right? <laughs> uh, uh, and Jesus Christ has compassion on us. He, he doesn't slap us. You know? <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> be a man! Don't be so weak! <laughs> he doesn't do that. He says, I was there. He was just like us. Uh, he could have been more uglier than he could have been more ugly. But I'm not kidding because the Bible says he was not very atta- attractive, right? So uh, he could have been ugly. We don't know. We don't know for sure. <laughs> but he was there. He has compassion on us when we are lonely, when we are at a loss, when we are lost. He has compassion on us. When we feel like we are losers, when we feel like we are useless, worthless, He has compassion. Christ is a good shepherd who has compassion. It says so in 
Mark 6.34. Mark 6.34. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them. Because they, they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Uh, it was interesting for me to read that verse. Because it, did, it doesn't say he had compassion on them, so he fed them right away. It doesn't say that. He had compassion on them, so he taught them. Spiritual nourishment first. You got to be fed spiritually first. And then he feeds them with five loaves of bread and two fish. Christ is a good shepherd who meets our spiritual needs. Spiritual needs must be met first. Very challenging for us. You don't have money, you can't put food on the table, then you starve. You don't have money, you can't pay the rent, then you become homeless. And yet, Jesus came to feed us spiritually first. The 5,000, well, there were, there were more than 5,000. It was just men were well, 5,000. So, including women and children, it must have been thousands. Uh, they were all fully fed, but they... They, they probably went hungry the next day again. So in John 10, Jesus says that uh, I fed you, uh, but you're going to go hungry again. So you got to have, uh, you, you got to have bread, that eternal bread. And you will never ever go hungry again. You got to drink from me. So that you will never ever go thirsty again. He makes that point in John 10. Well, I'm hungry right now. I'm not like you, Jesus. I'm not like you, God. You don't go hungry. I go hungry. I go, uh, sometimes, uh, it, you know, I feel like I'm dying. Do you feel the pain? Jesus says, I was there. I went hungry. I went tired. Uh, and I died. You think that you're going to die? I died for you. I resurrected. You believe me? You're going to be resurrected too. But, you know what? Christ has compassion that He meets our physical needs also. He meets our physical need. He is God. So he fed the 5,000, more than 5,000, with five loaves of bread and two fish. He can do that. He can do that. When our, our family thought that we were finished, we had a lot of debt. This was just years ago back. We had a lot of debt. God, I praise you for restoring my life. I praise you for giving this ministry. I praise you for uh, a lot of miracles and healings happening in my ministry. We're still broke. Well, we're about to, anyway. God, can't you... Fulfill, can't you meet our physical needs? He met our physical needs. Uh, we received a lump sum and we paid the debt. I wish that we had money to spare after that. <laughs> it was, I think it was just enough to pay the debt. <laughs> God knows best, He knows what He's doing. He's in control. Christ is a good shepherd. 
who not only meets our spiritual needs but also our physical needs. On the contrary, Satan is the thief. We see in the Bible that there is light and darkness. We see that there is the good shepherd and there is the thief. So we see a lot of contrast in the Bible. John 10.10 10, it says, uh, why don't we all read John 10.10? 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So the good shepherd have come to us that we may have life and have that, have it to the full. On the contrary, the thief comes only to steal. He stole my life, I know that for sure. And kill. I almost died a number of times in my life. And destroy. He destroyed my life. But God built it again. <laughs> I mean, uh, Jesus Christ, He restored my life. Satan has no compassion. I learned that. No compassion, no mercy. He may, he may meet our physical needs. He has, he has that much power. Matthew 4, 9, All this I will give you, he said, he said to Jesus Christ. No other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. He's still in control of the whole world, according to the Word of God. So, he can do that. But in turn, he will steal spiritual blessings. There was one condition when he said to Jesus that I will give you all these things. And that condition was worship. Don't worship God. Worship me. That was his condition. Satan may meet our physical needs. And I said, may, because there's no guarantee. Satan is a liar, so he will make promises, and he will never, ever keep them. It might seem as if he's keeping his promise. Well, that's to lower you. That's to seduce you. And to completely destroy you at the end. But at times... He may, well, uh, at times he may meet our physical needs. In turn, as I was saying, in turn, he will steal what's more important. What's most important in our lives, and that's spiritual blessings. That's exactly what it did to Adam and Eve. Eat this fruit. You eat this fruit. And you're going to become like God Himself. Basically, uh, what He meant was basically, uh, disobey God, don't worship Him. Just worship yourselves. Why don't you have to be the creation? Why can't you be the Creator? Don't, don't obey Him, disobey Him. And worship yourselves. They disobeyed, uh, and they lost uh, worship. Satan stole worship from their lives. And what happened? They lost everything else. They were kicked out of the Garden of Eve, Eden. Uh, they had to labor. Uh, Adam had to labor to put food on the table. And Eve uh, had to labor uh, with pain when having children. So they lost everything when they lost worship. That's what the enemy does. Sometimes the enemy will meet our physical needs, but there's always a condition or conditions. 
And that's to disobey God, not worship God, not follow God, not follow uh, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Mm. That's what the enemy does. But we're going to make Christ the Good Shepherd, our Lord. We're going to make Him our Master. Nowadays, a lot of people don't like this word, Lord. Why? Because literally it means master. Who wants a, who wants a master over his or her life? Nobody. I'm not a slave. I'm not even a servant. I don't need a master. I don't need a Lord over my life. You know what? Whether you like it or not, somebody is Lord over your life. At least according to the Word of God, according to the Bible, it's either Satan or God or Christ. So, it's best that we make Jesus Christ a good shepherd, our Lord, because He has compassion. You make Satan your Lord, He has no compassion. And he's here to steal, kill, and destroy. And he will, he will achieve his purpose at the end. In the process, he may give you what you want. But at the end, he will always, always achieve his goal. And that's to destroy your life. Especially take uh, especially uh, take the eternal life away. Uh, the eternal life that God wants to give us. So we want to make Christ a good shepherd, our Lord. But you got to make that decision. Because the Master takes care of His servants when you make that Master, your master. I, I said that word master three times. <laughs> Did it make sense? It still makes sense. Okay. That's a relief. <laughs> uh, right? Uh, um, there's your dad. There's your mom. And you're like, you're not my parents. I'm not going to listen to you. I don't need you. That's your loss. Right? You run away from home. Yeah, then you're homeless. You're going to go hungry. You're going to go starving. You're going to go thirsty. You have no protection. So it's like that. You've got to make Jesus Christ your Lord, your Master. Only then He will take care of you. Some people, they believe in Jesus Christ, but they are still their masters of their own lives. They're sitting on that throne where the king sits, where the master, the Lord, sits. And they're complaining that things are not working out. Well, here's my advice. You might want to I'm not going to say you might, but you definitely need to change your master. Uh, you definitely need to uh, let Jesus Christ sit on that throne. You come down from that throne and worship Him. Start worshiping yourself like Adam and Eve. You make Jesus Christ the Good Shepherd, your Lord, your Master of your life. He will refresh your souls. Psalms 23, 3. Let's all read Psalms 23, 3. It's in the bulletin. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for His name's sake. He will refresh our souls. Well, uh... I need a refreshing drink. I mean, forget about refreshing my soul. I, I need a refreshing drink. Gatorade, or Powerade, or whatever aid. Uh, 
<laughs> they are out there. Right? Uh, you know what? God made us as spiritual beings. We all have spirits. We all have souls. We need our souls to be refreshed. There's no way, no way we could do that except through Jesus Christ. God will refresh our souls through Jesus Christ. And, and Christ guides us for His name's sake. Psalm 23, 3. Uh, we, need, we all need guides. We all need guides. When I went to college, uh, I was lost because I had to make all the decisions by myself. Before everything, when I went to high school, everything was basically fixed. I had a fixed schedule and uh, I didn't have much of a choice. At, at least in my days, it was like that. I went to college and I had to make a lot of different decisions and I was on my own. I felt lost. I needed guidance. I graduated from college. I went out into the society. I had to work. Uh, I got married and I definitely had to work because somebody wasn't working. Uh, I had to make choices. I was lost. I needed guidance. We all need guidance throughout our lives. We have to make choices every moment of our lives, and uh, we all need a guide. Jesus Christ will guide us for His name's sake. What is His name? Jesus Christ. Christ, the Anointed One. The Anointed One who has solved our problem of Satan, sin, and separation from God. For that name's sake, He will guide us forever. And Psalm 23, 6. Shall we all read 20, uh, 23, 6? Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes. His goodness and love will follow me some days of my life. No. <laughs> A lot of days of my life. Oh, that's better. Not even that. All the days of my life, His goodness and love will follow me. You taste that goodness and love, you will be transformed. Now this morning I was just thinking, uh, when I was little, when I was growing up, I was so timid and I, I would get hurt so easily and I would have that uh, anger for years. I was not a very loving person, but uh, I changed. Well, sometimes I'm, I'm still not a very loving person, but uh, I changed. How did that happen? I tasted the goodness and love of Jesus Christ. That never, ever changed. I changed. Sometimes I was loving, sometimes I was not. Sometimes I was very kind, sometimes I was not. Sometimes I freaked people out. <laughs> when I burst out in anger, I did. Christ didn't change. He didn't change. And His goodness and love transformed me. His, he transformed me. His love will follow us forever. Forever. Parents' love is uh, so, so nice. I don't know what else to say. So sweet, so uh, nice. Uh, Christ's love is even better and His love will follow us forever. So, why don't we all make 
Christ our Lord. He's not a slave master. Yes, Lord means master. But he's not a slave master. He's always watching you to see if you're making a mistake or not. To see if you're sinning or not. That's a slave master. (laughs) This is the Lord, the master who died for our sins on the cross. And he has compassion for all of us. And when we are struggling, when we feel like we are dying, he says, I was there. I was there. And I am still with you. So, let's make, our, uh, let's make that decision this morning. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, our Lord. And we will lack nothing. Amen. Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack something. No. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. When you doubt that, when you don't believe that, then what happens? You start complaining. When you doubt that, then you are are, are in despair. In despair. You are even depressed. When you doubt this, then then you try to take charge of your own life. You try to become your own master. You make your own decisions. You make mistakes. And then you complain Jesus Christ. (laughs) I think that's what I did. So we got to have faith in the Word of God, in the promise of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. When you continually believe that, then you will lack nothing. And I hope that makes sense. (laughs) But uh, whether uh, we feel that we are in need or not, it doesn't matter. We lack nothing. Make Christ a good shepherd, your Lord, and you will lack nothing. Let me pray. Father God, thank you for giving Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Help us to make Him our Lord, our our Master, and enjoy uh, your promise. The promise that we will lack nothing. The promise that we lack nothing at all. I pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.